Good morning. So I am in my potato patch with Scout and Maggie's back there. And somebody has figured out that there are potatoes in the ground in the potato patch. So my entire potato bed has been dug in. If you're hearing that, that's the, uh, the helicopter crop duster. Sit, sit, stay. So he's flying over there at uh, the other field uh, anyway. So I started noticing that there were dig marks, uh, big holes. Uh, the plants were pushed down and broken. And I thought, am I not watering enough? Are they dry? Are they just falling over? And then I started seeing holes in the dirt and dirt on somebody's nose. So I came out here one day and I saw him digging. He eats the potatoes. Apparently he likes huckleberry gold. So we are going to have to fix that, not let somebody dig in the potato patch anymore. Unfortunately, dogs digging in the potatoes is not my only potato problem. We have a blight problem. So I didn't know what blight was before. I picked some leaves off, uh, took some pictures, asked some friends, and we have blight. So the best way to combat it is if you see blight started, you cut that part of it off, making sure not to shake the leaves uh, because the blight will get on the rest of the leaves. The helicopter again. But if you shake the leaves, the blight will get on the other leaves that are in the, the vicinity. So what we're going to do is cut just all of it down because we have enough summer left that I can let them dry out for a couple weeks, dig up the big ones that I want, replant uh, the smaller ones in a different location, and then start a whole new batch. Of course, my potatoes are not going to be big. Uh, it just means that we're going to have smaller potatoes, but smaller potatoes still give us things like uh, mashed potatoes, cubed potatoes, potato soup. Uh, we can put it in stews. We still have the ability to do other stuff with the potatoes. We just would have really small fries. <laughs> so I'm fine with it. I'm good with it. I don't like that we ended up with a, an infection of blight but we're going to deal with it and move on. So let's get started cutting down all of the growth. Now I'm going to burn it, not compost it, because if you put it in the compost bin, now you have that disease and that disease is going to be spread all over the garden. So we're going to burn all of this growth here. Let's get started cutting everything down. The second bed here uh, I noticed that a majority of the potatoes have not been touched by blight this whole section in the front here this was completely covered but it had not spread yet all the way down so what I'm going to do is take off all of the leaf structure of the stuff that's been contaminated and leave the stuff that has not been touched alone to see if I can prolong the, the harvest. So maybe bigger potatoes later. Uh, this whole front section on both of these beds as well are, are definitely blight. But as you move further back, they're not so bad. So I'm gonna see what I can do. If it's too much work, I may just cut it all down. But if I can save some of them, I think I'm going to do that. And so far as this section here, I think I'm going to be able to save. So on the second bed, it
it, it's not looking bad at all, uh, except for this front section here. So second bed, I think we might still have potatoes growing in there. So we'll cross our fingers if we can get that going. I am going to end up spraying the aerial portion of the plant with some um, fungicide. I'm going to have to go do some research and see which one's organic, which one I can use, and it's safe. But <clears throat> I, I think we may be able to save some of this. So I should be wiping down my, my cutters uh, in between each cut just so I'm not cross-contaminating stuff. Uh, but I didn't bring anything out with me. Um, we'll, we'll do what we can where we can. So let's continue on. first bed due to dog damage and blight is almost completely decimated. There are a few plants that I have left. I'm going to try and spray those to see if maybe I can salvage them. If not, then they come up too. And then in a couple weeks we pull up the potatoes. Uh, I don't want to leave the blight on the aerial portion of the plants because then it'll get down into the tubers and then destroy the crop completely. At least with this way, if I pull all of this stuff up in a couple weeks here, uh, it has not gotten to the tubers and I will be able to salvage those and I'll have them to be able to eat. Uh, the rest of the beds have anywhere between 50 and 75% of the aerial portion removed. So it's, it's a big loss, but it's not 100%. So we're, we're definitely grateful for that I do need to get the fungicide on it soon that way if um, because I didn't I didn't do the proper technique of keeping everything clean and sanitizing in between each cut and uh, sometimes the the leaves would shake a little bit and you know that's gonna that's gonna cross contaminate to, to leaves and foliage that wasn't originally contaminated so definitely need to uh, get that spray on it soon so that I can at least prevent any more spread and then watch that first bed to see maybe maybe I'll get something out of it but um, we gotta we gotta burn the foliage now so we're gonna we're gonna get on that uh, right now I have one more wheelbarrow that needs to go over there and burn it down all right so all of the potato aerial portion, uh, the foliage and greenery, is in a pile. I'm going to spread it out a little bit so it dries faster so that then I can burn it. Um, this is out in my, my back 40, which is not really a back 40. <laughs> I wish I had a back 40. Less neighbors. And neighbors wouldn't be a problem, except that for some reason, some people think that they have every right to dictate how you live your life. And I'm not sure how this all came about. I mean, seriously, as a, when I was younger, that was never a problem. Everybody knew that people were different and that everybody lived different lives and everybody had different wants and desires. And now all of a sudden in our society, it's like, if you disagree with someone, they're wrong. Well, that's not the case. You have your opinion, they have their opinion. Live your life, they'll live their lives. Stop trying to dictate. I mean, seriously. We're supposed to be a free constitutional republic society and we're turning into dictatorship. Like everybody wants to control everyone else. And that really, it actually stems down to People have no control over their own lives, so they think that they should be able to control other people's lives. It's sad. But, do you like me? Don't let it bother you. 
Just do your life. Live your life. Be you. Do you. Be happy. Anyway, I am going to spray in the high tunnel now because I have an infestation of aphids. Uh, we went to we went to Coeur d'Alene, uh, that's North Idaho. There's a theme park up there. And this theme park, uh, Silverwood, I believe it's called, uh, we spent an entire week up there just relaxing and enjoying. But the day we left, I noticed some aphids in the high tunnel. And I sprayed them off, did what I could before I left. <laughs> So I did what I could with the aphids before I left. Um, but of course, when I got back, there was an infestation because it doesn't take long. As soon as you have one aphid, you have a thousand aphids. And then you have billions of aphids. And then you have trillions of aphids. It just, that's how life goes. So um, when I got back, I went in and tried spraying everything down that I could. Uh, but it, uh, it, was, it was a little too far gone. My cauliflower is completely decimated. Uh, the broccoli is fine. The cabbage is fine. There's a few that were not, so I fed those to the rabbits. Um, but everything else is completely untouched. And what I can pretty much do is call the cauliflower a sacrificial plant. So with the cauliflower, sacrificing it to the aphids instead of, say, my tomatoes or my peppers, my summer crop that is still growing and hasn't produced yet, is much better than than the alternative so anyway we got back and um, it was a fun trip it really was uh, we definitely enjoyed it it was a little less organized than what i think it should have been or could have been uh, but it was a bunch of teenage kids running all of the the rides of course i'm into the rides Woo! maggie scared a bird out <laughs> Uh, anyway, so I love all the scary rides. Uh, Wes stood off to the side and watched me, probably hoping to get uh, life insurance. But we spent a week there, came back, and immediately had to jump into work, uh, especially with the aphids. Uh, we do have some cabbage flies. Uh, that's not as big of a deal. That was mostly on the broccoli, and I, I pretty much cleared that off. Uh, but now I'm, I'm battling aphids and blight. So, yay. Uh, we'll have to burn the potato uh, foliage when it's, it's nice and dried out so that it'll actually burn. Uh, it is in the area that used to be my horse arena, which is just dirt and weeds. So not a big deal, nothing, nothing that's gonna spread. So we got back and I started milking Mabel again and I noticed that Sassy was not uh, nursing uh, as much. So Sassy is starting to wean herself a lot and that's problematic because I am not going to be milking twice a day, every day. Nope, not happening. So I pissed off Wes. <laughs> Yeah, and I went and picked up a small bull calf, uh, super inexpensive. He is red Frisian Jersey cross. Uh, so the red Frisian is a, is a bigger style of kind of like a, a Holstein. And then the Jersey, of course, is a slower growing uh, breed, but uh, the meat and the fat on a Jersey way better than anything else. I absolutely love Jersey meat so we went and picked him up so let's go meet him good morning Mabel sassy hi sassy and our new addition because he is red Frisian we decided to name him red and he is just cute and sweet and oh little skittish but not too bad I picked him up as a 10 day old uh, knowing he still was going to be able to graft to Mabel 
He definitely latched on almost instantly. Uh, Mabel is still not grafted to him just yet, but we're working on that. Are my pants yummy? So I have kind of separated Sassy from Mabel because Mabel prefers Sassy. Uh, they've just, hey, give me that. No, 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 no. Are you kidding me? No, no. She ate my glove. No, 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 no. My glove. That's awesome. <sighs> oh my gosh. So Red knows where food is. He was just aggressive enough to make Mabel let him eat. He would run out in front of her and make her stop and start eating again. She would kick at him, but he would be very persistent and continue on. Uh, Mabel has pretty much stopped kicking at him now, so uh, he's able to just go up and eat if she's standing up. Uh, hopefully none of that rubber and stuff from the glove <laughs> makes it through. Goodness. So this is our cow family. Uh, he's not going to be around for very long. Um, he, uh, he's specifically here to keep Mabel in milk and that's it. Uh, when he's about six or seven months old and he starts weaning himself, we're probably going to dry Mabel off because she'll be a couple months out from, uh, having a baby. Um, oh, which by the way, the AI attempt that I made didn't keep or didn't take, so she did not get pregnant. But uh, we're going to be doing that again uh, at the first weekend of August. Uh, we're going to try again. She should be coming into heat at that point. Um, if the other glove doesn't kill her. Uh, so uh, we want to dry her off a couple months before um, she gives birth. That way she can uh, gain a little bit of weight. Uh, build up the colostrum, do all the things that she's supposed to do right before uh, giving birth, and we should have another baby. So once we have another baby, we're not going to need this guy, this guy anymore. So we'll be able to sell him as a grass calf, and if he grows anything like Sassy did, he'll be pretty darn big, pretty darn heavy. And, uh, in another 12 months, he'll be butcher weight and somebody can have some awesome meat. But for now, he's, he's there to, to keep Mabel in milk. So that's what we needed to do. Anyway, so I think I'm going to go combat the, uh, the aphids in the high tunnel and continue on with my day. So thanks for joining me today. We'll see you again next time. Bye.